with Rock and H Farm Toys. I uh, would like to introduce a customer of mine named Doug Lee. He, back in September of 2014, bought the MA Series beds. That's how I became acquainted with them. And then out of the blue, he shared some information with me, and I thought that would be useful to you. And I asked him if I could have a short interview with him so he could share his knowledge with you and and uh, everyone learn a little bit as we go. So, uh, Doug, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, first question I have for you, can you just introduce yourself to the Rock and Age audience, who you are, what you're doing, and things like that? Sure. Name's Doug. I'm a student at North Dakota State University uh, in egg engineering. Um, since uh, high school, I've always had interest in uh, farm machinery and trucks, so model building kind of uh, grew from that. Um, mainly build uh, triaxle grain body trucks or beet trucks since I'm three hours from the Red River Valley. So. Okay. So uh, most do you use DCP or other brands, or do you have a favorite that you like to use, or how does that how's that evolved? I usually use uh, international trucks, not not mainly uh, any uh, Kenworth DCP trucks or Peterbilt trucks. Kind of like to build trucks that are similar ones in the air. Um, my last. Uh, Grain truck, triaxle truck was a, a Freightliner FLD 120. Um, kind of modeled after uh, one of my uncle's neighbors in the Red River Valley that he used on his farm. I kind of like uh, models that are different from everybody else. Okay. Because not every farm up in our area has a nice W900 uh, straight truck for their operation. It's usually some old worn out Freightliner International. So Cool. So are you're chopping up what uh Ertl trucks and making day cabs out of sleeper trucks and things like that? Yeah, currently I'm uh working on six T six hundred A and B model Kenworths making um day cab. Um some of them I'll make into uh straight trucks with grain bodies, and some I'll just keep them a semi-tractor. All right. Uh, do you use the stock Ertl frame, or do you put them on a, a DCP frame or something like that, or how do you work on those, or how's that come about? Uh, I'm currently still working on them, but I plan to put them on DCP frames. Okay. So. Okay. Well, awesome. That's great. Um, so you're you're mostly into kind of the, the not the oddballs, but certainly... Uh, the less popular trucks versus Peterbilt and Kenworth. That's pretty cool. Uh, how how'd you come into 3D? Uh, I know you bought the the MA files from me back in September. I'm curious what kind of experience you had with it previous to that. Um, not a whole experience. I've only had about a year of exposure to Shapeways and 3D printing and models. Um, I had an internship with a manufacturing company, and they had their own 3D printer in-house where they printed their own prototype parts. So I was familiar with that area of 3D printing, but only came about uh, the um, the modeling side of 3D printing about a year ago. So. Okay. Okay, that's cool. So um, you've now had some of the MA files... Printed. Um, what was where'd you go with that? Once you bought the files, then then what was your next step? Um, I researched online what uh, online three D printer companies were available. Right. Um, came across iMaterialize. They uh, turned out to be the cheapest when you uh, ordered them in uh, quantities greater than I don't know, two or three. Okay, so um, and so the audience knows. Well, maybe they know or they don't know. But back in September of of uh, twenty, or excuse me, October seventh, twenty fourteen, Shapeways came around and restructured their pricing on all their models. 
uh, that they produce in strong and flexible plastics primarily. And what happened was the M A, for example, would cost me twenty four dollars to print at Shapeways, and then after the seventh they began charging on the amount of volume the item takes up in the print bed because they'll cram their printing bed with just thousands of models. They'll pack it as tight as they can. So your models are printing with, you know, rings and airplanes and robot parts and everything else. And there's a lot of dead space with the MA. <laughs> and they yeah. started charging me for it. It cost $44, which I think you found out, right? Yes. Exactly. Right. Okay, so uh, you went to iMaterialize. Uh, I think listeners here might be familiar with Shapeway's vernacular, the white, strong, and flexible, white, strong, and flexible, polished, and then like ultra-frosted detail, etc. What what did you learn differently at iMaterialize? Uh, they have completely different uh, materials. So I was, once I got to their website, I had to research so what kind of materials I had. Okay. Um, Polyamide is very similar to strong and flexible, which is almost close to the polished version. Which is a, I found that the polyamide is actually a finer resolution than what Shapeways prints. Um, really? Yeah. Um, the once I had it shipped to my uh, home address, um, did some testing, and it's just as flexible and does not fracture with it. Um, whole lot of uh, bending on it. Okay. So it's pretty durable. I'm impressed with the, the product. Okay, this polyamide material, is that their entry-level plastic? Yeah, it seems to be their, their cheapest, um, mostly used product. Okay. They have other um, materials like resin and uh, alumide, which I haven't tried yet. But Okay. So your your experience with them is just with that entry level polyamide type plastic. Yep. They okay. also have a polyamide express, which is they cut the lead time basically in half, which they also charge more too. But right, what you get with with the um, quicker lead time. Okay, I noticed Shapeways just announced they sent me an email saying I was, you know, selected for this special program. Well, I think everyone was selected. But, again, they have an express model where you can get it faster. But, my gosh, yeah, you're right. It does affect the price. <laughs> Better not yeah. be in a hurry. Um, one thing, I did do a little looking on, on iMaterialize, and I have not bought anything there. I intend to when I do my own harvest crew. I've got six beds I want to print. Um, did, did they offer the dyed plastics in the entry level. I know Shapeways doesn't. You can get them black or white, but other colors is only reserved for polished. Um, I guess I haven't looked into that. They have a multicolor that I'm aware of, but I'm not sure of strictly one color for each print. Okay. Okay, that's cool. All right. And and overall the what's the lead time like? I ordered uh Shipment from uh, Shapeways and I, I materialized the same day, and they showed up within a day from each other to my okay. door. So, so about that 15 day, yeah, more or less. Okay. Same time, and then I noticed they actually send the emails when your product's been to the delivered to the print bed, and oh. removed from the print bed, and then being shipped. So they're more in contact than Shapeways is with you. Okay. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Um, you mentioned in that email to me back in, I think, December it was, you said, now, the big difference in price was when you order more than one, two or three or four. Um, what, what about smaller parts? What did you notice there, like the hoist and the mounting frame, things like that? Um, I noticed the hoist and the mounting frame are more expensive than Shapeways. So they came the if I remember right, the hoist came to about $15. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm not sure why the smaller parts are more expensive, if, if it's the detail or what. But. Huh. Now, what, what? did you order more than one hoist? Did that make a difference? No, it didn't drop the price very significantly. 
So you're saying it, it what you found in your experience is just yeah. the bed and the silage drax and gate screwed yeah. together is where you're saving the money. Yeah. So are you having those other parts printed at Shapeways yet or, or yes. how do you handle that? Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Well that's pretty awesome. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that would be really important. Is there anything else that stands out with your experience from Shapeways to I materialize vice versa? I I can think of, I guess. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And then, uh, how many of you bought now the, of the beds? Uh, from the, since I ordered the the files from you, I bought eight beds total. Okay. Four of the twenty-two foot and four of the twenty foot, and the eight bodies. Right. And did you have you mounted them on trucks already? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Still working that out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it takes time. I understand, especially when you're in college. I I, I fully appreciate how busy you are. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Um, kind of curious if if you could leave visitors or listeners here uh, a tip on anything regarding 3D printing or modeling, or if you had one tip to leave listeners with, what would it be? Um, probably take your time building models. Um. I find that if I get frustrated with something, I just walk away and then come back and find a way easier way of doing it, and then it actually turns out better than I thought it would. Excellent. Well, that's good so. to that's good to hear. I'm I'm glad to hear that because that is so true. It does, man. You got to take time and be patient with it. Um, sometimes it works, and sometimes it, you you fight it all the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, that is awesome, Doug. I sure appreciate you coming on on the show here and and sharing some time with me, taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule. I uh, really appreciate that, and I know the listeners out here will certainly uh, uh, find your your comparison with I materialize and Shapeways valuable. So I thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for having me. Hey, you bet. We'll talk to you again. <laughs>